Listen, uh, hadith of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, especially the narration of Ibn Hibban, uh, where he mentions, إِنَّ لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ شِرَّ وَلِكُلِّ شِرَّةٍ فَتْرَ فَمَنْ كَانَتْ فَتْرَتُهُ هِيَ سُنَّتِي فَقَدْ اِحْتَدَى وَمَنْ كَانَتْ إِلَى غَيْرِ ذَلِكَ فَقَدْ هَلَكْ وَكَمَا قَالَ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ uh, The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said that uh, everyone has a peak and every peak has its course. You got your high point, you got your low point. And in this narration, he uh, emphasized Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the low point rather than the high point. And he said that whoever's low point is to my sunnah, then they have been guided, and whoever has it to something else, فَقَدْ هَلَكْ They will collapse. Uh, very important here, you know, if you read that hadith at face value, you might think, low point being sunnah, does that mean that the example of the Prophet ﷺ has to be my low point? No, no, not the practice. The Prophet ﷺ is talking about the creed, the methodology, the guidelines. Uh, because what, what, inno what innovation brought in terms of thinking was uh, unrealistic standards, unrealistic practices, and lots of disappointments. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ told the three young men that came searching around his house, right, to, you know, asking his, his, his spouses about what his practice was like and then saying, well, that's him. We need to fast all day and never break our fast. We need to not be intimate with our spouses. We need to, you know, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever turns away from my sunnah is not from me. So he's talking about the methodology, alayhi salatu wasalam. The ulama emphasized the fatra, not the shirra. The low point, not the peak. Why? The peak is when you're feeling it. You're in stride, you feel great, you're in hajj, you're in umrah, you're in Ramadan, you are, you're really feeling connected right now. All right, that's your high point, your zeal, okay? The low point, being in accordance with the sunnah, the ulama mentioned is two things. Number one, that you do not abandon fara'ad. You don't abandon obligatory deeds in your low point. You don't abandon the obligatory. Number two, you don't engage in major sin. All right? So those are the two main keys with the low point. What does that mean? People that try to come in really hard end up crashing really, really, really hard. You know? It's like Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala saw a really overzealous uh, young man who wanted to argue with him. He said, I want to debate you. It's like, you just became religious yesterday. I want to debate you. All right? Like, <laughs> all right? He's like, I want to debate with you, Imam Malik. Imam Malik is like, all right, well, if you win, what happens? He said, you'll follow my opinion. And he said, and if I win, what happens? He said, I'll follow your opinion. And he said that a person who turns their religion into just an object of argumentation is going to keep on changing it. If your religion is just jidal, like you're overzealous today, so you're fighting over it, arguing, mashallah, you became a, key, a keyboard warrior over the time, all right? You're going to be the complete opposite of what you are today. And that's exactly what they said. They said the man went from extreme to extreme to extreme until he eventually left Islam. Okay, and you, we see that sometimes. Someone comes in super religious, super religious, and then they super go away, you know, right? Like they come in really quick, high, and then really, really, really low. Because it was unrealistic from the start. This wasn't a healthy journey for you. What does this mean for us? The average person, when I'm not feeling great, I'm still gonna come to Jummah. I'm still gonna come to Fajr if I can, Isha. Still going to keep some connection to the masjid. Maybe I'm not at the, the level I want to be. My three or five prayers a day in the masjid. I still want to come to one. I still want to come twice a week if I'm not coming up. You know, uh, I'm not going to give up the fara'at. I'm still going to fast Ramadan. I'm still going to stay away from drugs. I'm still going to stay away from zina. I'm not going to start watching this or doing this or going to this place or going to that place because I'm feeling low right now. I'm at a low point in my faith and spirituality. I still have a, a, a baseline here. And my baseline is that methodology of the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam, right? That I'm not going to go beyond this point. And that's the difference between uh, taking a break and actually descending, right? Taking a step back versus taking a step down, okay? Sometimes take a breather and reassess. I set this goal for myself in terms of a nafila, for example, <clears throat> right? That I really wanted to be a person who prays Qiyam al um, I got Witr suddenly down. Like, Witr is like, that's it. I do Witr every night now. Alhamdulillah, this is amazing. I've never been this consistent with Witr. All right, let me add two rakahs. And then next thing you know, you, you, you got tired, things got in the way, you got really busy at work, and oh my God, I'm not praying Witr anymore. I feel horrible. Uh, so if two rakahs that I was going to do with Qiyam before that, gone. Well, you know, like, 
I need to get now, I need to get right back to the Qiyam and the Witr because the, I, I last left off with five rak'ahs. So if I'm not doing five rak'ahs, I'm failing. No, go back to one and then three. Build back your Witr habit. Reassess. Okay, how about if I just start adding two rak'ahs once a week and do that for a couple of months? See how that goes for me. Alhamdulillah, it's working. I choose a night that, that works for me. All right, it's working. Now, let me add another two rak'ahs there. See how that goes for me. Build slowly, gradually. But your baseline has to be, I will not forsake the fara'id, I will not forsake the obligatory, nor will I engage in one of the fawahish, and one of those shameless uh, open sins. Let me add a couple of things here over here. Uh, one instance that is very important, extremely important to safeguard these fara'id is actually to pray the nawafil. I know a lot of us you know, say, well, um, alhamdulillah, if I do the fara'id, mashallah, I'm good, alhamdulillah. I wanted to aspire to a higher level a little bit. Your sunnah, your nafil that you pray before Dhuhr and after Dhuhr and after Maghrib and after Isha and when you come to the masjid you pray two rak'ah before you sit down. You pray Dhuha Salah, you pray two rak'ah or four rak'ah at night and so on. All these nawafil that you pray, they, they will safeguard your faridah for you. Why? Because when you get weaker, you're most likely going to quit the nawafil before you come to the farad. But if you have no, if no nawafil to, to safeguard your faridah, if you get weak, what's going to happen? You're going to quit on some of your farad. And that becomes extremely dangerous. So safeguard your farida with the nawafil. That's extremely important. So make sure to build the habit and the good inshallah tradition of praying more than just the fard salah and more than just you know, the, the sunnah of duhur and, and maghrib and this and that. Add more to it inshallah ta'ala. The second thing I need also to remind myself and everyone here is to focus on the a'mal of al the hearts. Again, I'll come back to the heart. Because we always focus on my salah, I always focus on my Mondays and Thursdays, I stop praying, I, fo I focus on the dua that I stop doing and making. And, but rarely that we really, we sit down and reassess uh, uh, the, the condition of the heart. And I've spoken about this a few weeks ago in the Fajr Khatira one time about Al-Quwwatul Ilmiyya and Al-Quwwatul Amaliyya, that your heart needs these two things, the power of knowledge and the power of passion. You know, your, your power of passion to do, I need to have the fuel for that. And that fuel needs to be appropriate, ilm. That knowledge that will immediately push you to do that which is better, better inshallah. So to upgrade, one of the way we can continue on the journey, obviously, is always upgrade your ilm and your knowledge. Ask yourself the question, when was the last time you opened a book? When was the last time you even learned something new? When was the last time you read something for Ibn Qayyim, Ibn al-Jawzi, or Dhabi, or Ghazali, or this or that? Besides these fancy quotes that you read on Instagram, when did you really read a paragraph from the beginning to the end? We are really that we are upgrading in terms of our knowledge right now. And our knowledge is becoming stagnant. And guess what? If the last time you read a book was maybe two years ago, that means you're two years behind. So if you start going downwards, you know why. Because the fuel is coming down right now, so you need to make sure to keep fueling yourself with that proper knowledge, insha'Allah wa ta'ala. wa ta'ala. Jazakumullah khairan wa barakallah fiqum. May Allah subhanahu wa bless you and your families, Ya Rabbil Alameen. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this a blessed night to all of us, Ya Rabbi. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who witness Laylatul Qadr, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us our sins, our shortcomings. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept the best of our deeds, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our fasting, our qiyam. Our dua, our adkar, our recitation Amen. of the Quran. Amen. Ya Rabbi, you ask you to accept from us the best of our deeds, Ya Rabbi Alameen. Ya Allah, we come to you this evening with all our shortcomings, our sins, and we ask you that you replace them with hasanat, Ya Rabbi Alameen. Ya Allah, we ask you to, to raise our status in this dunya and in the akhirah, Ya Rabbi Alameen. Amen. Guide our hearts to that which is most pleasing to you and make it easy for us to follow it, Ya Rabbi Alameen. Amen. And Ya Allah, show us that which is wrong and make it easy to stay away from it, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. Keep our hearts sincere to you and only to you, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, we ask you to fill our hearts with love for this deen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Amen. Ya Allah, we ask you to forgive our families, our parents, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Have mercy on them, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. Forgive our spouses, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Guide their hearts, Ya Allah. Guide the, the hearts of our children, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Make our families the comfort and the coolness of the eyes for us in this dunya and in the akhirah, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, we ask you to bless us with the Quran and the love for the Quran. Ya Allah, we ask you to give us the ability to memorize and learn the Qur'an, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Live by the instruction of the Qur'an, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. Amen. Ya Allah, we ask you to soften our hearts to the reminder of the book of the Qur'an and the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
Ya Allah, we ask you to soften our hearts to the dhikr of Allah, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Give us all peace and tranquility in our hearts, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. The way we gather in this, in this place, in this dunya, we ask you, Ya Rabbi, that you do not deprive us from getting together in Jannah al firdaus al-A'la with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Jazakum khair, assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.